Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I shall rise with you. Hello friends, welcome to lecture preparation for the fourth Sunday of Lent. March 11th, 2018. Now we're going to do the readings from cycle B, uh, which will be at all the masses except for 10.30. 10.30 will be cycle A, and I'm sorry to say, but you're on your own for that, for those who are, are uh, scheduled to uh, to read that. So again, on, on March 11th, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we'll use the, uh, the cycle B readings except for the 1030, which will be cycle A. Uh, we're going to begin with the uh, reading from the book of Second Chronicles, and Bob Kane will help us with that. This reading is a narrative in which the entire drama of the Babylonian exile is related, but this is not a mere history lesson. Down in the commentary, the reading from Chronicles is from the last chapter of the two-volume theological history that begins with Adam and concludes with the declarations of Cyrus the Persian. Today's text is a window that offers a glimpse into the entire history of Israel from the chronicler's perspective. The leadership of princes and priests was sometimes lax, and other times blatantly sinful as they added infidelity to infidelity, and their people followed. The chronicler reports that they polluted the Lord's temple in Jerusalem, worshipped idols, and were unjust to each other. In spite of their sinfulness, God did not abandon them, but sent prophets as messengers. God's motivation was compassion, an essential characteristic of the God of the Covenant. Yet the people met God's merciful compassion with three repeated responses. They mocked God's messengers, they despised God's warnings, and they scoffed at the prophets. Then God's anger against the people was so inflamed that he allowed hostile nations to attack the people in order to punish them. Weakened by their sin, the people were prey to enemies who burnt the house of God, tore down walls, destroyed palaces, killed many people, and sent others into exile in Babylon. In these few verses, we hear a summary of the history that was repeated over and over. The people's sin, God's compassion in drawing them back, the people's continued sin, and divine punishment, often through foreign nations. The prophets had warned of the consequences of such wickedness. Jeremiah, in particular, prophesied that their failure to respect the Sabbath would result in the land itself being laid waste in a kind of prolonged Sabbath rest, a 70-year exile in Babylon. Yet that is not the end of the story. The conclusion of the chronicler's history is filled with promise, God did not only use foreign nations to punish. Here, God uses Cyrus, the king of Persia, to offer the people another chance at life in their own land. In fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy, Cyrus announces that the Lord has charged him to build a house in Jerusalem. Cyrus prays for whoever goes up to Jerusalem. May his God be with him. Such hope, after a turbulent history, ends the book and is, in fact, the final chapter of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. 
Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at the prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, and set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. It's a long reading. And it's going to take some real care and to make sure that you uh, keep it interesting the whole time. Uh, if you look on page 80, it says, to keep in mind, it says, proclamation cannot be effective yes. unless it is expressive. I thought I did. Yes, so, you did. Oh. I was, and as you prepare your proclamation, make choices about emotions. Some choices are already evident in the text. So that's important. Proclamation cannot be effective mm -hmm. unless it is expressive, expressive. And that's why we do this. Lily, the second reading? Yes, the commentary at the bottom. In the first reading from Chronicles, we heard that God acted with compassion when Israel had sinned. In the letter to the Ephesians, we hear a corresponding de depiction. God is rich in mercy, and that mercy and compassion are particularly evident when people have sinned. Whether it be the infidelities of the past or the transgressions in Paul's day, God reaches out to sinners with unbounded mercy as a manifestation of divine love. In Christ, we can see how active the divine mercy is. God brings people to life with Christ and saves them by grace, and both expressions indicate a, trans a transformation. Those dead through sin now have life. Sinners in need of rescue from the slavery and imprisonment of sin have been brought to safety. Paul says we have already been raised with Christ and are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, proclaiming that believers already share in Christ's exaltation. Three times Paul attaches the prefix sin, which means with, to verbs to express how intimate is the relationship we have with Christ. We might translate the verbs as co-live, be co-raised, or be co-seated. Therefore, Paul uses a collection of verbs with the sin prefix in a baptismal context, and he is likely doing so here as well. Paul creates new words to express the extraordinary newness created by God's mercy. Baptism is the immersion into the grace of God by which we, even now, share in Christ's life, death, resurrection, and exaltation. 
Paul adds to his description of God's abundant mercy by writing of God's immeasurable riches, acting in kindness and ever bestowing the gift of grace. Lest believers think that their own actions bring about the transformation Paul has been describing, he insists that salvation is the work of God's grace. The final image used to to describe a person transformed by grace is work of art. Each person immersed into Christ's life is a stunning creation made by the divine craftsman. To see a believer is to see God's own handiwork. People doing good works and living the new life in Christ are living testimony to the God who is rich in mercy. Uh, the side comments, we are saved. Uh, that is the simple message. Uh, make your assembly know this is good news by smiling with your voice, eyes, and face. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated with him in the heavens uh, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Lily. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go on to the next page for the uh, reading of the gospel. Look, it's just to keep in mind, some words in bold, that is in our workbook, are significant words about which you must make a choice to help their meaning stand out. You may or may not choose to stress them now i was i was listening to lily as she was reading and she really most of those bold words she did stress and 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 although to stress doesn't doesn't it's not always the same like like when she said the word boast she said so no one may boast you know Mm -hmm. it, it was it was it was she stressed it by by uh de stressing it if you will and um and so uh, this is one way for us to, to look at this. I think it's probably a good place to start when you're reading. Is, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and read this, the gospel. I'm going to let you read the commentary below. But I'm going to read with, the, um, uh, with a, a stress on the, the bold words. Just a couple of notes before I go there. I really like the beginning of this at the left on top of page 82. Think of someone specific you know who needs to hear that God loves them. Proclaim this exhortatory reading as if speaking to that one person. Encourage them. Really convince them of God's great love for them. And I think there are a lot of readings that we can do that do that with. And um, that's uh, very important. And then it also says, smile with your eyes, your voice, your eyes and face. It's good news. Most of what we read is good news. Sometimes, sometimes every once in a while we get a reading where it's, 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 we don't really want to hear it, and it's not really great news, but it's what we need to hear. Uh, but it's important that overall, you know, that through all of these readings, make sure you know how much God loves them. That's what this is about. So I'm going to emphasize the, the bold words in this. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the Lord of the, of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. Mm. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. And I wanted to do that because that as, I, beautiful. as I read that, it put a different twist on it yes. than I would normally have uh, put on there, maybe because I've heard it done mm-hmm. a certain way. So you might try that and uh, um, and see how that that works. So there's there's not a correct interpretation of any of this, nor is there a correct way of proclaiming it. I mean, we have Bob, Kane, Lily, Murray, and myself here today, and and you know we have our own way of expressing things, and we all have uh, that too. Murray, uh, Lily was saying uh, earlier how she likes to listen to the other readers and and see how how uh, things that they do that that she likes, that she can maybe try them for herself. So that's the point. You don't need to sound like Bob or Lily or me. I want, want you to sound like yourself, but just be authentic and, and, and let that word become part of you and, and you will greatly bless all of us. Thank you, Lord, for... Sorry, I thank you, rather, for all of your attention and your time, and God bless all of you. Christ and be more out.